Welcome to Race My Buick's Garage, aka Mackey's Motors. Okay, so I got this awesome Twister Hammerhead 250 from Mike Myers. Thank you, Mike. And we could only get it to fire on ether. And when I say fire, I'm talking about one really loud backfire that knocked over one of these chairs once. So I had suspected originally that the timing would be off or the valve timing was very, very incorrect. After messing with the valves, about an hour's worth of playing with this valve cover right here, with the external adjusters, um, I got fed up and I started taking things apart. So, looking at this unit, when I took it apart, everything seemed to be in working order. One adjuster is a little snug to move back and forth, but it definitely makes a difference with the cranking of the engine. That is the intake valve, I believe. It definitely made a difference, so it's definitely working properly. So, I didn't suspect that. Um, when I pulled the top end off, I had the cam set at top dead center, which I believe is the correct position. Big hole at the top. And those two lines were parallel with the cylinder head. I thought that would have been top dead center. I'm hoping I was correct, because that's how I took it apart. The cam lobes themselves aren't in too bad of shape. I didn't notice any out around or any grooves in there. I didn't mic it yet. I gotta find that tool. But head gasket was clean. There was no leaks. Only a little tiny bit of engine oil residue in the intake. So nothing to lead me to believe that anything was really amiss, except for the fact that it wouldn't run. So I got the jug off. Pulled the piston out, and one thing I noticed right away was that my piston rings, excuse my mess, were lined up with each other almost, with well, very, very little gap here. There's one piston ring gap, compression ring, and the other one is right next to it. Oh god, I'm terrible at videotaping, I apologize. So, that was one thing I noticed right away. Not critical but I'm certain it wasn't helping also looking here there's my timing mark and I was told that that should be at 12 o'clock on the engine case which would be in this shiny section right here um, you can see it is not now this is in the position I left it in when I disassembled the engine the piston did not move when I pulled the cylinder it is Got some tension on it from the CVT, so if I roll it back to top dead center, which should be right around there, it does want to go back that way. I'm hoping that if I set it at top dead center, which I will make it stay, uh, that would resolve the issue and this baby will fire up. I don't know enough about these 250s to claim that this is going to be the fix. I do know that Mike went out and spent some money on a brand new carburetor and a brand new CDI, which is one of these cool guys. Check that out. See-through. Adjustable. Um, I didn't play with this at all. I just plugged it in and cranked. And all I can get was a backfire. So, there's your flywheel. Magneto. Starter wheel, which fell out when I took it apart. I have no idea where the heck that goes. <laughs> Learning curve. Oh. And to top it all off, my cylinder head. I had this bad boy apart last night. Took everything out, took the valves out, cleaned them up a little bit. I didn't lap them back in because they were really clean on the inside. I cleaned the chamber with a small brass wire brush. Um, there was nothing that screams to me that this needs a valve job or a new head. Uh, no cracks, no damage any way, shape, or form. A little bit of carbon buildup, but nothing to tell me that this was suspect to be the issue. So, I'm at a loss. Uh, unless I'm onto something with the timing being off. But... I won't know. I'm going to scrape off the gaskets tomorrow, uh, get the cylinder prepared, get my gasket kits, 
and see if I can get it back together because I want to hear this thing run. It's my very first 250 buggy ever. So, the cylinder is really, really clean. There's no scores. You can tell it sat for a while. You can see where the uh, compression rings were sitting in the cylinder. But um, I wasn't even going to bother honing it because it is really clean. And there you go. There's your stator. Water pump. I mean, everything seems to be in working order. Nothing was loose. So I'm at a loss. Uh, for those that you remember, I got another Dune 150, just like the old days. Got a fancy little generator gas tank on it. And some Go Fast goodies. <laughs> yep. Can't beat the prices anymore. Um, riding around with my daughter, the... Uh, Shocks kind of gave up on us and knocked my air filter off, so we'll have to get another one. But, um, still running my, uh, classic oh, RevMax CDI, if you can see it. And an old MRP hot coil from back in the day. Still got the 30mm pumper carb on there. It's got a 145 jet, and for added fun, let's see if I can light it up in there. The intake riser and aluminum manifold. It goes. It's definitely faster than the stock ones. Um, my brother has a stock Punisher. We have a stock carburetor. Uh, the only modification to it was a CDI uh, to get it running properly because somebody had installed the incorrect CDI. But um, it has a just an open element filter and a CDI, and yeah, the Dune still takes the cake. But more on the Twister to follow. I'll keep everybody posted. Um, sure would like to get this thing running because, man, that will be a fun buggy. And more importantly, I have another Tomberlin buggy that looks just like this one that uh, is in need of an engine, and I think... It would be an awesome swap to slap that rear with that independent suspension on the back of a Baja or Punisher. So, I'll keep you updated. Let me know if I'm on the right track here.